All right, but guys, back again with another video. Um, Nick and I, Nick is joining me today, and we're going to discuss uh, how to review logs. So basically, we're going to go through a log of Taloc and Mythrax from our friend Pixel. Um, we're going to kind of go and then juxtapose it to other logs using the compare tool from uh, Warcraft Logs. Um, let's just jump into the video. Um, Nick, yeah. do you have anything to say before nope. we get started? Let's get right into it. All right, so we got the compare tool. So we compared two logs that have similar kill times between I'm Pixel and Kittylicious. So basically, what we're going to kind of do it first off is we're going to kind of look at the talents. Um, and we're also going to kind of look at the stats. So what you can see on the right-hand side is that Kittylicious is like significantly more geared than Pixel, um, having about a 1,200 intellect gap. Um, that's a pretty big deal, um, especially whenever you kind of look at the item level. Like yeah. a 10 item level disparity is pretty big overall. Uh, additionally. Um, Kittylicious is using double lively spirit, meaning that he has access to a little bit more burst than Pixel will have with the streaking stars. Also, Pixel is using Dagger in the Bag, which isn't optimal. It's simming quite high, but in uh, in like actual fights, it's not that great because usually you can stand behind the boss, which mm -hmm. makes it not that good. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right, so let's get down to the damage. Done. Also, something so to keep in mind. Um, Check out for gems, because a lot of people have like 7 to 8 gems sometimes, which mm -hmm. also can boost your stats by quite a bit. As an example, Pixel has like none, and the other guy has like 4 right now, so that's something yeah, to Yeah, Kitty Lish just has two, 2 gems on his weapons as well, Yeah. Um, whereas Pixel just has a base 370 weapon. This guy has two, like a 375 weapon, uh, main hand. It, with a gem in it, like, and he has two gems total. So he's actually, he's got a lot of gems overall is what we're trying to say. Yeah. And it, like, look at his secondary differential as well. Um, like, it's pretty high. There's a, there's a pretty big disparity here in mm -hmm. terms of, like, secondaries because mastery is very, is not very worth a lot, whereas um, haste is worth a significant amount more. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty big deal overall. Yeah. So we can jump into the kind of the casts and the damage done. All right, so so first off, something that you see that is a lot different is the casts done, even with a similar fight. Um, this could be due to a wide variety of things, but um, so different. Like typically on Taloc, depending on how quickly your the rest of your raid is killing the ads during the intermission, will kind of skew the casts. So something to kind of look at whenever you're um, looking at this kind of thing is you'll go and you'll look at just just boss like uh, casts on the boss. So we're going to pull up both uh, sides of the Taloc log for both I'm Pixel and Kittylicious and kind of look at the casts in the boss. So we, where you can gauge like a, a more appropriate response as to whether or not like they're being able to cast on the boss to, to the same amount. And you can kind of look at this graph and you can see that they have similar uptime on the boss, whereas their intermission is about similar length overall. So first thing I noticed that is a pretty glaring differential is the amount of Star Surge, star surge is casted. Um, Pixel has 23, where Kitty Alicious has 27. That is a large differential. And that might be because of the the difference in Wrath casts, because that sticks out pretty widely. 42 Wrath cast to 57, that is a lot. Um, additionally, the Lunar Strikes, five Lunar Strikes, that's a fair amount of Astral Power that he's just losing as well. They both um, had like similar uh, dot casts besides the Moonfire, which Pixel had like two more. So something you mm -hmm. can look at too, because a lot of people keep uh, spamming dots when they are need to move and you can see if they have like 20 or 25 casts of moon Moonfire and Sunfire. It's usually yeah. like a reason why you lose a lot of DPS. Yeah, because so if you're over dotting outside of the pandemic window, you're basically losing the ability to cast a Wrath or a Lunar Strike during that ability because you're yeah. instead um, spending that global on casting a It's, it's like a wasted GCD basically. Mm -hmm, exactly. So that's that's like one really good gauge as to whether or not um, what you're doing is correct. And especially on a fight like Taloc, um, just looking at Taloc boss damage is a pretty good gauge as to whether or not um, you're close to uh, other players. Additionally, they both got four casts of Force of Nature off, which um, on a minute cooldown is very good because it means that they're using it on cooldown. Yep. Um, so the next thing I would look at is kind of incarnation usage. Um, find it here. All right, and they both got two uses, um, which is pretty good. So making sure that you have 100% 100 uh, usage of Incarn is a pretty big deal overall. Additionally, I saw that Kitty Licious was using, um, was it Lively Spirit? So he'll have, okay, I guess you won't see it there. So you'll see a Lively Spirit buff. Um, and what we noticed before, whenever we were looking at this log, is that Kitty Licious actually casted Lively Spirit 
um, pre-pull or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, he cast Innervate pre-pull, so his healer started stacking his Lively Spirit pre-pull, and I think he got two very large Lively Spirit also, um, stacks. something to keep in mind, uh, Kitty bloodlusted at the, at the start, like on pull, and uh, I think it's... is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they had different Kitty bloodlust, just did bloodlust time, yeah. on pull, whereas Pixel bloodlusted at the start of uh, exactly. So that's like why he's also bursting way more in the start mm -hmm. compared to Pixel. Let's see if I can find bloodlust. Where is it? It's not auto populating. Hold on, let me find it. Oh, where is bloodlust? Oh, here we go. Time warp. Um. So yeah, you can see kind of where so. Pixel actually pops it at the start, whereas Kitty Licious actually oh, okay. pops its second half. So it's the other way around. Oh um, yeah, right. As to what you said. Yeah, yeah. But so the difference is, is Kitty is getting like a very large, uh, lively spirit stack with his inner or uh, with his Correct, um, yeah. So it's bloodlust, like whereas Pixel doesn't. Basically, um, so generally lust. speaking, it, I think bloodlusting at the beginning or at the second half doesn't make that big of a difference, Nick. Personally, but I mean. It, it depends I, I on how more... you how you get your incarnation. Usually, you don't have incarnation up when you go actually down to P three. Mm -hmm. So when you just right away bloodlust, you probably miss like a bit of bloodlust uptime with your incarnation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, all right. And then something else um, that is also a very good tip for newer players, especially if you don't know how to adequately look through logs, is a uh, Wow Analyzer. So currently, Wow Analyzer is being maintained by Jeebus. I know Escala used to have um, major major involvement in WoW Analyzer, maybe not so much anymore. If she still does, I apologize, but um, big big ups to Jeebus for uh, maintaining WoW Analyzer. Yep. Um, and so right here, we have the two logs auto-populated in the WoW Analyzer. So basically, you take your log, and you'll throw it inside a WoW Analyzer, and you're, um, it'll pop up, and then you'll just like select your name, and then it'll show this screen. You'll get this screen, basically. And so we have it right here for Kitty and I'm Pixel. And right away, something that stands out is this always be casting thing between the two of them. Um, so currently, Kitty has 6.38% downtime and 4.41% cancel casts, um, whereas Pixel has 14% downtime and a 7.5% cancel cast. So this could be due to a variety of reasons. The downtime itself could just be due to the elevator phase and your melee or whatever being able to just slaughter the ads. So Taloc isn't always the most indicative, but um, the canceled casts thing is a pretty big deal because 4.41 to 7.5% cancel casts is a fairly large uh differential mm -hmm. um additionally the um wow analyzer has a suggestions tab and you can kind of see what exactly you can always be doing differently like for example kitty uh, overcapped uh 33 astral power over the course of the fight which is like you really don't want to cap astral power that's like a really big deal right yeah it's it's like most mostly the biggest dps loss you can have mm -hmm. whereas the suggestions for pixel is talking about his downtime and his percent of canceled casts so honestly um Downtime and percentage of cancel casts will be more indicative of your damage overall, even more than how many, like, what your best rotation or what your optimal rotation is. Um, so making sure that you're able to, like, maximize your uptime and always be casting is, like, a really big deal for your damage, especially for Moonkin players. I know for other classes it might be a little bit different, but for Balance Druid specifically is a really big deal. Also, Additionally, um, um, about okay, the always okay. be casting thing, you can scroll down to the graph. You can actually see like red marked casts that get cancelled, like the two lunar strikes at the start, which mm -hmm. you can just check what you actually did wrong and see. Maybe you remember or you can see like mm -hmm. where you can improve. Yep, and this is definitely a big deal whenever you're um, comparing it inside of your cooldown window, especially if you're running yeah. streaking stars or whatever else. Being able to like check back and watch your streaking stars cast and make sure that you're casting appropriate spells and not repeating spells two times in a row is a pretty big deal overall. So yeah, this this timeline as well and uh, WoW Analyzer is also super useful. Yep. All right. And so the second log we're going to do today is Mithrax. Um, so Mithrax is a little bit more complex in terms of like how we're looking at it. So we actually kind of, I kind of went through and I looked at boss damage again, not not just because, um, not just because I think it's like the best way of doing it, but because I think um, it's the most important part of the fight, right? So. Yeah, exactly. Ads need to die too, but usually people yeah. try to pad on those ads more than they actually need to DPS them. Mm-hmm. What was the guy? Yeah, was the, guy the, we the, in this? the rigid. Which one? Rigid. Oh, rigid. Yeah, here we go. Thank you. I was like, 
Oh, what? Oh, I didn't select Mithrax for both. Okay, so right here we have all their all their casts. And like we said, um, we're going to be looking specifically at Mithrax damage because we think Mithrax is the most important part of this fight overall. So we're pulling out both sides of Mithrax. And um, right now, the biggest thing that sticks out to me, again, is the Star Surge cast oh, yeah, and the Lunar sure. Strikes and the Solar Rats. I mean, it, it really comes down to like how many of these casts you're getting out in total. And we can kind of look, and we can look at casts. We can look at cast breakdown in total, and kind of get a glimpse as to like, oh, maybe Pixel's hitting the ads more or whatever else. Um, whenever this loads. Oh uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so you can kind of look at the cast breakdown even, and if you don't think, oh, maybe Ridge is prioritizing hitting the boss instead of hitting the ads, you can kind of see that he's actually just getting significantly more casts overall. Um, so more Wraths turn into more Lunar Strikes, turn into more Star Surges, which entails, like, you're able to just do more damage. It kind of compounds and it kind of snowballs out of control with being able to get more and more Solar Wrath casts because you're getting more Star Surges and you're getting more Lunar Strikes. And you're getting more Empowerment up uptime and everything else so being able to make sure that you're minimizing your downtime and casting more solar wrath and lunar strike and everything else is a really big deal additionally being able to gauge what you're spending your astral power on whether or not it's worth star falling or not is also a pre pretty big deal um neither of you guys star on this log for mithrax but if they were making sure that they have at least nine uh 27 hits total um, nine hits per target on three targets or more is a pretty big deal. So making sure that you have at least 27 hits is a pretty big deal for Starfall to making sure you're getting maximum value of your astral power efficiency. Um, additionally, overdotting is still a pretty big deal. Uh, making sure that you're not overcasting your dots. You kind of see how many dots this guy had casted overall. You can see he's dotting the visions pretty heavily by mm -hmm. comparison to what Pixel is doing, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just a difference in play. And then and the fight's always going to be different um, depending on the two players. So additionally, you can kind of look through the replay function on WoW Analyzer. Um, it doesn't work super sick with the replay tool, but you can kind of look through the replay function to kind of see where their ads are clumped, how they're doing the fight differently, how he's positioning and whatever else. Um, so yeah, hold on. Let me, let's pull up the boss damage and kind of see the difference in boss damage. What you can also see again is different uh, Bloodlust timings. Which may also oh, uh, affect your um, DPS in some way if you have like bad bloodlust timings. It's always oh, the yeah. blue part in the in the graph shows the yep. bloodlust timing. This dark blue part in the graph shows bloodlust timing. Yeah. Oh, man. So yeah, one probably loses like. So yeah, so pixel bloodlust. pixel uses bloodlust in the earlier part, whereas this guy used it later on. Um, probably coming straight out of the phase, right? Um, so yeah. Ridge probably had, if we're, if we're just speculating, because I don't know what's taking so long, we can, pop, we can pull up this incarnation graph. Um, so we're going to look at incarnation. So you can kind of see just from down here that he has incarnation for the back half. with, And they probably just burn the boss, if we're just guessing. They probably just burn the boss and let the visions sit there casting. And and he has the ads cross-dotted while he's sitting there popping incarnate as the boss. Yes, yeah, oh, so you can see also... Yeah, Pixel, Pixel only, only use... has two incarns, yeah. right? Whereas Ridge has three uses, which is a really big deal. It's because Pixel looks like he delayed his first incarn so long that he mm -hmm. didn't get that extra use. Whereas Ridge kind of popped his a little bit earlier. He also probably delayed his second one a bit. It yeah. Seems. A Yo, yeah, he definitely delayed his second yeah, one yeah. a bit as well. It's, it was both. It wasn't just one issue. Probably an intermission uh, for, for delaying it for the boss in P3. Yeah, and then while there's nothing wrong with delaying your end card to try to kill the boss quicker, using it a more priority target damage, it definitely will impact your damage negatively if you're not using it um, in the most optimal way. Yeah, Missing uses is going to be a pretty big deal, especially for a three-minute cooldown. Uh, I mean, however, it could potentially be better um, damage-wise or even just fight design-wise for you to save your um, cooldown to where you do miss a use or whatever else. Um, so it just kind of depends on the fight overall. Mm -hmm. All right. And with that said, um, do you have anything else to say, Nick? Not really. Um, usually, it's much easier for people to look at WoW Analyzer over Warcraft Logs because it shows all the info on like one mm -hmm. page. Uh, mm -hmm. So we try to recommend WoW Analyzer over actual like Warcraft Logs because it's so much easier. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah. Uh, addition, additionally, being able to look through the replay and whatever yeah. else is a pretty big deal. That's something um, that we can do a more in Lizzo. Yep, exactly. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to DM Nick or I mm -hmm. and ask about log asking us to do log reviews or whatever else. Additionally, we do offer log reviews on our Patreon. Um, if you do DM us, though, we won't require you to pay anything. We're normally pretty available. Uh, if one of us is busy, I'll normally hit up somebody else if I'm if I'm in the middle of something or whatever else. But um, yeah, guys, I hope this guy's helped. Remember, um, compare function and work our flaws pretty big. Wow analyzer pretty big. And that will be it. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Later. Later. Hey, guys. Special shout out to our Patreon supporters Arui, Mr. Sliggy, Bloodkin, Pixel, Hamflaps, and Taters. Thanks. All right. There you go, Tyler. <laughs>